Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, I want to talk about a new feature found in Lightroom Classic version 13. That feature is called Point Color. A couple weeks ago, I did do a video where I went over several of the new features found in Lightroom Classic version 13. And in that video, I did talk about and demo Point Color, but that was more of an overview. In today's video, I want to go into greater detail on this new feature and offer you some tips on how to best utilize point color in your workflow. Now, first of all, when you're in Lightroom Classic and you're in the develop module, you'll notice that the right-hand panel is slightly different. In the past, there used to be a tab that was called HSL Color. That tab has been replaced with Color Mixer. When you roll that open, you'll notice that this new tab has two main sections, Mixer and Point Color. The Mixer section has everything that the HSL Color section used to have. You'll notice there's a drop-down, and by default, you'll be in HSL. This is the HSL section of the HSL Color tab that were in previous versions of Lightroom, and everything is here. Use saturation luminance, all here. All the sliders are there. The targeted adjustment tool is there. Everything's the same. If you go to that drop-down and go to Color, you'll notice it switches to the Color section of the HSL Color tab that was in previous versions of Lightroom Classic, and everything's there. So don't worry. If you have images that have edits done with older versions of Lightroom and you use the HSL Color um, adjustments on those images, everything carries over here, and it's in this Mixer section. So you don't have to worry about losing those edits or those edits getting screwed up. What is new, though, is this point color section. With point color, you use a color picker to pick the exact color you want to adjust. The color picker is the eyedropper. Just click on it. Your cursor turns into that eyedropper tool, and you notice there's a little magnifier there, and that magnifier is very useful. It allows you to make sure that you're clicking on the exact color you want to adjust. Now, for this example, I'm, gonna, I'm going to click on the purple shed in the foreground. So we'll just find uniform purple with my magnifier, click once, and you'll notice then next to the eyedropper, there's this tiny little color swatch there. And you'll notice that that color is represented here and here in these kind of windows. And we'll talk about that more in a moment. Below that are three sliders, hue shift, sat shift or saturation shift, and loom or lum shift, and that's luminance shift. So we could shift the luminance of this purple shed. I'll make it brighter. I could make it more saturated, move this to the right. I could shift the hue if I wanted to, but I don't really want to shift the hue. And you'll notice as I'm moving these sliders that the circles up here are moving. So if I shift the hue, you could see how that larger circle in the larger box is moving left and right. If I shift the saturation, that same circle moves up or down. And if I move this bottom luminance slider, the circle on the far right moves up and down. So you could move the sliders directly, or you could come up here and move these circles if you prefer. So if you want to shift the U, you would go this way. You could see how the U shift is moving, but you could see how that saturation is moving a little bit. If you want to make sure that you're moving this horizontally only and not up and down, hold in the command or control key. Control if you have a PC, command if you have a Mac. That will restrict its movement horizontally, so it will only be able to move horizontally. If you want to make sure that you're only moving it up and down, hold in the shift key and then it will restrict its movement to vertical only and you won't be able to move it sideways. You can see I'm trying to move it sideways and I can't, I'm holding in the shift key. Now, if you want to make a very fine adjustment, you just want to move it a tiny bit, hold in the alt or option key, alt if you have a PC option, if you have a Mac and you could just make micro adjustments. You can see I'm moving the slider or I'm moving my mouse cursor a lot, but that circle is barely moving. So you can make kind of micro adjustments that way. Now to reset everything, let's say you just want to start over, just double click on the words point color and you'll reset it. So we could come in now, get the eyedropper. I could go over the purple, click on that purple. I want to make it brighter. I want to increase saturation a bit. And that's all I want to do there. Now I'm going to get the eyedropper again. I'll click on the yellow and we'll do something similar. I'm going to make it brighter. I'm going to increase saturation. I'm going to get the eyedropper. I'm going to pick, click on the green. You can see where I'm going with this, right? I'm going to make that brighter and saturated. Get the eyedropper. So you can see I'm, I'm targeting specific colors. In this case, the colors of the shed. 
in this case the magenta. Get brighter. Let's do that orange shed, get that out of the way. And make it brighter and saturation. Now, this one, finally. All right. And make that a little brighter and a little more saturated. Now let's say, okay, I like them all, but that purple one I want to readjust. Well, just click on that purple swatch, the first one I did. And then I could come in and readjust it. But I want to make you aware of something. Notice as I'm moving the luminance of the purple shed, it's affecting that purple shed in the foreground. But look at that blue shed off in the distance, affecting that as well. So this, when you first click, it isn't super precise and it is a global adjustment. It's going to affect every single pixel that is of similar color everywhere in your image. So you need to be aware of that because you might be so focused on the purple shed as you're adjusting this, you're not noticing what it's doing to that blue shed off there in the distance. So be aware of that. Uh, it's a global adjustment. Unfortunately, there's no masking in Lightroom, so I can't mask like masking as there is in Photoshop, I should say, where I could put a mask to this and just have it uh, mask out the blue shed. So I'm only doing this adjustment to the purple shed. Now I can refine it. You could refine it with this range to make it more precise. So it's just that we're exactly where I clicked. You'd move this range slider to the left. You can see how it's restricting it as I click on it. See how it restricts it. And then it may not affect that blue as much. You can see it's not affecting the blue quite as much off there in the distance. If I reset range by double clicking on it and watch when I move the luminance, see how it's affecting the blue off in the distance a little more readily. So there isn't masking as there is in Photoshop where I could add a mask to this and make sure that I'm not affecting that at all. But I could affect the range with this range slider. Now, if I move the range slider, of course, to the right, then it affects it even more, right? So, you, so if I want to make sure that I'm trying to only do that purple shed and not the blue one as much, go to that range slider. Now, you can roll this open and let's say you want to restrict the range for luminance only, but you don't care about the saturation in the U. What you would do is you would go to this luminance range and move this thing to the right or left. You can see how you move it. And then if I move it to the right and then I go to this luminance shift, it won't affect that blue shut off in the distance as much. So you could see how you could move these around you got to experiment with these sliders, see what they do. You could restrict the range as much as possible. Right here. Again, if you need to reset anything, double click on a slider or the slider's name to reset it. Uh, in that case, this one, these, you got to click right on that, the little slider thing, the actual little slider itself. But you could reset these like that. See, so you could click on the names to reset them. Could roll that closed again and just do your normal thing that I was doing. Now, if you want to visually see a little better what you're adjusting, you could click on this little checkbox, visual range. And what it will do is it will render everything that isn't being, being affected in black and white. And you can see that we have pretty much everything in black and white when I have this range all the way this way. When I go start going to the right, you can see how we're getting color in this blue shed off in the distance. So see how we're restricting it, but we're also starting to restrict our color adjustments where shade is hitting this shed over here. So you, it's kind of like a six of one, half a dozen of the other. There, there's little trade-offs you have to deal with when you're working on this and you need to find a happy medium, but this visualized range may help you better narrow down exactly what you're adjusting and how you're adjusting it. Now let's go to a more real world situation because this was relatively easy. We had these brightly colored uh, sheds. Let's go to something like this, a little landscape image. And those of you that watch my videos know that I typically like to do three things with the HSL color tabs, specifically in the HSL section. When I'm in this section, I like to make the yellows, um, well, for, not new, sorry. I go to luminance and I make the yellows brighter and I make the greens darker a little bit. And then I go to the blues and I make those darker. And those kind of adjustments I typically would do. Well, I could get a more precise and a more exact adjustment with the point color section. So I'm going to reset this HSL section, just holding the option key. And you can see how it says reset luminance there. And I could click once. Optionally, if I don't want to hold in the option key or alt key, 
you just double click on the word luminance and it resets that. So we'll go back to this point color. Let's do similar adjustments here. I'm going to get the eyedropper and I'm going to try to use that magnifier to find the yellowest grass that I could click on, maybe right there. All right, so you can see I have this uh, color picker shown. Yeah, it's pretty bright yellow. And I'm going to make the yellows brighter. See, it's kind of uniform though. That's okay. Let's get that color picker and let's pick a darker green. Like right there. And I'm going to make that darker. Now, I'm not real happy with this because I don't think it has a lot of tonal range that I'm going for. Let me give you a before after. There's before and there's after. Just kind of more made the grass uniformly bright maybe. So what I can do is I want to roll this open and I want to be on the yellow, the first one I picked or the light green. And I'm going to then take this and move it to the right. Now you can see how it's kind of restricting my adjustment to the brightest green. So I'm kind of moved it, I shifted it to the brightest green so that now I'm getting more of a tonal variance in the grass, which is typically what I want to do. So that's what I would, uh, how I would adjust this. Um, conversely, I could go to that green, and if I want it to be the darker greens, I could move this around as well, but I don't think I want to. Just leave that right where it was. So there's my adjustment for the grass. Then I would get that eyedropper again and click on the blue sky. And with this one, I would just make it darker, maybe a little more saturated. Now that's kind of a lot of work, don't you agree, to do that? And you got to kind of, you know, and I pretty much do that same type of, I, I, I should say, I overdid it here, okay? This is overcooked. I wouldn't do it as much as I just did. But hopefully it shows you in the video what you can do. So I'll leave it overcooked a little bit for this demonstration. But you see how you could use these sliders and kind of make it a little bit more precise. So you could uh, adjust exactly what you want to adjust the way you want to adjust it. What I can do though, is I could create a preset of this. So what I'll do is I'll open up the left panel and I'll go to presets, I'll roll that open. I'll click this little plus sign. I'm gonna create a preset. I'm gonna come down here, I'm going to check none. And I'm going to go up here where it says point color and I'm just going to check point color. That way, if I do adjustments, like this image has adjustments done to it in basic tab and lens corrections. If everything was checked, it would override or overwrite any adjustments I did to the image. I only want this preset to add the point color adjustments that I just did. So I'm going to call this, um, I don't know, sky and grass. So this is what I typically do with landscape images that have a lot of sky, a lot of grass in it. So that's what I called it. It's going to be in the user presets. I get support and amount slider. That's important. I'll show you that in a moment. And we'll click create. Now you'll see that up here there's user presets. There's that sky and grass. Now let's go to another image that is taken on the same day of a different sculpture. And um, you can see there's no point color adjustments here at all. There are some basic adjustments done. And there were lens corrections done here as well. All right. So we want these... Um, in the color mixer section, we want some point color adjustments, but instead of manually doing it, I'm just going to go over here and click on this preset. And you can see all my adjustments are there that I just did. And I'll give you a before after. There's before, there's after. Again, that's, that's overbaked. I typically won't do it that much, but there is an amount slider here. Remember I said that it's important to make sure that you have it turned on or when you create the preset, that you have that option to have the amount slider. That way, I could tone it down a little. I could bring it up a little. So I could just adjust it the way I want it, just like that. Then on that previous image that I mentioned was overdone, I'll add the preset there, even though the adjustment is already there, but that adding the preset gives me this amount slider. So I could pull it back. So hopefully the little tips I gave you in this video will help you better utilize point color in your workflow. I think it's a great tool. And once you kind of get used to it, you could go very, very quickly. It, at first, it may take you a little longer than the old HSL color tab. Because with the HSL color tab, I mean, you would just grab, I use the HSL 
uh, section. I never really use the color section. They both do the exact same thing. They're just cosmetically different. They're laid out different and they look different, but they do the exact same adjustments. But I would mainly use that HSL section and I would come in and go to luminance right away and I'd push yellow up. I take green down, I push blue down. Then sometimes I would go to saturation, increase saturation of those same colors. Sometimes I'd increase saturation of others as well. But I could do that very quickly. Point color may, might take a bit longer, but if you do those, uh, if you find yourself doing the same adjustment over and over and over again, create a preset as I did. And again, to do that, I just real quick go to that plus sign, create preset. And this is important. Make sure support amount slider is checked so that you are creating that slider or including that slider with the preset so that you could come in and tweak it up or down as needed for the image you happen to be working on. That's it for this video. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.